Hi, my name is Christian McNeely, and I'm a third-year cardiology fellow at Bon Jewish Hospital at Washington University Medical Center. My case is titled, Anterior STEMI Complicated by Cardiogenic Shock in a 34-Year-Old Male, a Team-Based Approach. So this is a case of a 34-year-old male with no past medical history who suffered a cardiac arrest at home on Thanksgiving Day. He received bystander CPR by his family, and EMS was called. This was the ECG that was done in the field, which demonstrated ventricular fibrillation. The patient was subsequently defibrillated, and this is his post-defibrillation ECG, which demonstrates marked ST elevation and AVR, V1 and V2 with reciprocal ST depressions. The patient was subsequently taken to an outside hospital where he underwent cardiac catheterization. Here is a shot of his left coronary artery, which reveals an acutely occluded proximal LID, subtotally occluded ramus branch, and at least moderate disease in a large OM. Here's a shot of the RCA, which is diffusely diseased throughout most of its course. The patient underwent primary PCI at the outside hospital with a reasonable result. An intra aortic balloon pump was placed and he was transferred to our institution for further management. On the left side of the screen here, the patient's hemodynamics on arrival with the balloon pump augmenting one to one. His hemodynamics demonstrate a mildly depressed cardiac output, but good filling pressures and mean arterial pressure. Eight hours later, however, the patient's hemodynamics worsened with a declining MAP and rising filling pressures. This was coupled with an elevated lactate and poor urine output. Dibutamine was added at this point to try and turn things around. Despite adding inotropic support, however, we were unable to get the patient to appropriately stabilize. So at this point, we decided to upgrade his support by deploying bedside ECMO. The following morning, the patient was taken to the OR for an axillary 5 ohm impella. The patient was subsequently quickly weaned off pressure support with normalization of lactate and end organ function. His hemodynamics um, on ECMO and impella here on the left side of the screen demonstrate a marked improvement in his MAP and filling pressures. So at this point, uh, the patient stabilized after STEMI, but still had a subtotally occluded ramus branch, high-grade disease, and a large OM and a severely diseased right coronary artery. The patient also remained on ECMO and Impella at this point in time. As a result, we subsequently brought the patient back to the cardiac catheterization lab to attempt to complete his revascularization. We first started working on uh, the large OM branch, um, where we placed a stent here with um, here's the final result. We next turned our attention to the subtotally occluded ramus branch. Uh, we're ballooning here. This is the result after stenting. We then turned our attention to the right corner artery, which uh, again is severely diseased throughout most of its course. We were ballooning in the proximal and mid segment, more ballooning, and Here's the final result after stenting. The following day, the patient was subsequently decannulated from ECMO. These are his hemodynamics while on P3 um, with the Impella 5O, which demonstrated a good MAP, filling pressures, and greatly improved cardiac output. The Impella was subsequently removed on hospital day 7. The patient had normalization of end organ function. He was started on guideline-directed medical therapy at a pre-discharge ejection fraction of 45%, and he was discharged home on hospital day 14. He's doing well at three months follow-up with return to normal activity and work. So for learning points for this case, shock accompanying acute myocardial infarction may worsen 12 to 24 hours into hospital course, even after culprit PCI. Hemodynamic guidance with a swan gains catheter is critical for the management of acute myocardial infarction complicated by shock. AMI complicated by shock often requires multiple support modalities to both unload the recovering LV and allow for adequate organ perfusion. And finally, a team-based approach with both our surgeons, critical care colleagues, and interventionalists is key to achieving optimal outcomes in these complicated patients. Thank you very much for your attention.